recognize the archbishops and bishops of other dioceses of the Latin and Cyril Melibar rites, who join me with bishops Francis Kane and George Rassus, who are here as co-consecrators with me today. Welcome to the representatives of the Eastern and Orthodox churches, our sister communities, and to the ministers and leaders of other Christian communities who so lovingly pastor their people and who gladly work closely together in Chicago in service of all God's people. Welcome to those from the Council of Religious Leaders of Metropolitan Chicago and from the Jewish community who celebrate with us on this joyful occasion of the Archdiocese of Chicago. We are blessed to have you all with us. There is also a blessing in knowing that the Lord is with us. The Lord is ever ready with his mercy and forgiveness. So let us begin by acknowledging our sinfulness and faith.
ministry of the high priest this day. Grant that they may carry out worthily the office of bishop, and under your governance in all things, they may direct by word and example the people entrusted to their care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Czytanie z Księgi Mądrości. Modliłem się i dano mi zrozumienie. Przyzywałem i przyszedł na mnie duch mądrości. Przeniosłem ją nad berła i tronę i w porównaniu z nią za nic miałem bogactwa. Nie porównałem z nią drogi kamieni, bo wszystko złoto wobec niej jest garścią piasku, a srebro przy niej ma wartość błota. Umiłowałem ją nad zdrowie i piękność i wola, wolałem mieć ją aniżeli światło, bo nie zna snu blask od niej wyjący. Oby mi Bóg dał słowo, odpowiednie do myśli i myślenie godne tego, co mi dano. On jest bowiem i przewodnikiem mądrości i tym, który mędrcom nadaje kierunek. W ręku Jego i my, i nasze słowa, roztropność wszelka i umiejętność działania. Oto Słowo Boże.
Lectura de la primera carta del apóstol San Pedro. Hermanos, me dirijo ahora a los pastores de las comunidades de ustedes. Yo, que también soy pastor como ellos, y además he sido testigo de los sufrimientos de Cristo y participé de la gloria de que se va a manifestar. Apacienten el rebaño que Dios les ha confiado y cuiden de él, no como obligados por la fuerza, sino de buena gana, como Dios quería, no por ambición de dinero, sino con entrega generosa, no como si ustedes fueran los dueños de las comunidades que se les ha confiado, sino dando buen ejemplo. Y cuando aparezca el Pastor Supremo, recibirán el premio inmortal de la gloria. Palabra de Dios. Jesus said to his disciples, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, 
but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not drive out demons in your name? Did we not do mighty deeds in your name? Then I will declare to them solemnly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you evildoers. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house. But it did not collapse. It had been solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine, but does not act on them, will be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, and it collapsed and was completely ruined. When Jesus finished these words, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as their scribes. The Gospel of the Lord.
Bernardo Supic, the Church of Chicago asks that you ordain these priests, Mark Bartosik, Robert Casey, and Ronald Hicks, for service as bishops. Have you the mandates for the Holy See? We have. Then let them be read. Your Eminence, Cardinal Supic. Your Excellencies, Bishop Kane and Bishop Rassas, Your Excellencies, Auxiliary Bishop Elect X, Bartosik and Kassé, Your Excellency, Auxiliary Bishops of Chicago, my brother Archbishops and Bishops, dear priests, deacons, consecrated religious, and lay faithful of the Archdiocese of Chicago, dear friends. I am truly pleased to be with you today in this venerable Holy Name Cathedral as Monsignor Ronald Hicks, Father Mark Bartosik, and Father Robert Cassi are ordained to the fullness of the priesthood and begin their ministry as auxiliary bishops of the Archdiocese of Chicago and close collaborators of the chief shepherd of this local church, Cardinal Blaise Sopic. It's been said that Chicago has over the years earned the nickname of Windy City. Not uh, precisely because of the gusts that come off Lake Michigan and other kind of gusts coming. <laughs> Dear auxiliary bishops, elect as seminary classmates, you have already made significant contributions as priests and episcopal vicars. We are confident that you will contribute to another kind of wind, not a lot of hot air, but that of a strong driving wing of the Holy Spirit. Through the intercession of Saint Robert Bellarmin, Bishop and Doctor to the Church, whose feast the Church commemorates today, we pray that the Holy Spirit will drive and guide you and your Episcopal ministry with learning and virtue to the spiritual betterment of this family of faith and the community at large. And now, with great joy, I will read for you the translation of each of the apostolic letters of appointment. I have three, so I will ask you a bit of patience. You know, these letters are sent directly by the Holy Father and signed by him. They are written in Latin. This is a translation in English. First one, Francis, Bishop, servant of the servants of God. To our beloved son, Ronald Hicks, from the clergy of the Metropolitan See of Chicago and Vicar General there, appointed auxiliary bishop of the same see and likewise promoted to the titular church of Munaziana, greetings and apostolic blessings. Celebrating a very firm faith in God and exercising our ministry as the successor of Blessed Peter, we strive with zealous and steadfast care to provide for whatever is opportune for the governance of Christ's faithful. For this reason, when our venerable brother plays Joseph Supic, Cardinal of the Holy Roman Church and Metropolitan Archbishop of Chicago, in consideration of the pastoral needs of the Archdiocese, requested from us that another auxiliary bishop be assigned to him, we decided to grant readily to him assistance of this kind. Indeed, it seemed best if you, beloved son, endowed as you are with proven qualities and administrative skill, were to be appointed to this office. Therefore, Upon consultation with the Congregation for Bishops, by virtue of our apostolic authority, we appoint you titular bishop of Munaziana and also auxiliary of Chicago in accordance with the norm of law. Concerning your episcopal ordination, you may receive it anywhere, even outside the city of Rome, 
from any Catholic bishop, the liturgical laws being observed. However, prior to this, you must make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity toward us and our successors. Moreover, you will take care to strengthen continually together with the ordinary of the aforementioned flock, your fraternal bond and ministry. Finally, we are confident that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of all believers, will look upon you kindly with her benign countenance, imitating her example of faith, hope and charity, you will devote yourself completely to the work of her Son and attend to the mystery of redemption with the grace of God Almighty. Given at Rome, at St. Peter's, on the third day of the month of July, in the year of the Lord, 2018, the sixth of our pontificate. And it is signed, Francis. Second, Francis, Bishop. Servants of the servants of God. To our beloved son, Mark Bartosik, presbyter of the Metropolitan See of Chicago and until now, director there of the Colby House and pastor of Assumption Parish, appointed auxiliary of the same archdiocese and likewise elected titular bishop of Narakata, greeting and apostolic blessing. In the exercise of our office as successor of Blessed Peter, the love of Christ urges us to provide help from those shepherds who, out of consideration for the spiritual needs of the faithful and trusted to them, request from us auxiliaries so that they may carry out more completely and effectively their pastoral ministry. Indeed, since our venerable brother, brother Blaise Joseph Supic, Cardinal of the Holy Roman Church and Metropolitan Archbishop of Chicago, had made such a request, we, for our part, accepted his petition, joyfully and gladly going to his assistance. For this reason, we have turned our thought to you, beloved son, endowed as you are with the human as well as the priestly skills and virtues requisite for this responsibility. Therefore, upon consultation with the Congregation for Bishops, by our apostolic authority, we appoint you Auxiliary Bishop of Chicago, at the same time promoting you to the vacant Episcopal titular see of Naratkata, in accordance with the norm of the ecclesiastical law. Concerning your Episcopal ordination, you may receive it from any bishop of the Catholic faith outside the city of Rome, the liturgical norms being observed. However, prior to this, you must make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity toward us and our successors. Finally, beloved son, aided by constant prayer and strengthened by help from on high, may you begin your ministry as an auxiliary bishop focusing on one thing, to bring genuine assistance, both to the chief shepherd of the aforementioned flock and to the community of the faithful, so that, together with the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Archdiocese of Chicago may grow more and more in faith, in hope, and in charity. Given at Rome, at St. Peter's, on the third day of the month of July, in the year of the Lord, 2018, the sixth of our pontificate, and it is signed Francis, the last one. Francis, bishop, servant of the servants of God. To our beloved son, Robert Cassie, priest of the Archdiocese of Chicago and until now pastor there of St. Bede, the venerable parish, appointed auxiliary bishop of the same see and likewise promoted to the titular church of Tuburbo Maggiore, greetings and apostolic blessing. Christ the Lord, our firm hope, has entrusted to us the mandate of proclaiming zealously the truth of salvation and of providing shepherds 
for all the faithful, so that the divine precepts may be made known to all nations. For this reason, we have waited carefully the petition of our venerable, venerable brother, Blaise Joseph Supic, Cardinal of the Holy Roman Church and Ordinary of Chicago, who requested from us another auxiliary bishop to assist him suitably in fulfilling his pastoral office. Accordingly, we turn our thoughts to you, beloved son, whom we have come to know as one endowed with the strength and qualities needed to direct the people of God. Therefore, upon consultation with the Congregation for Bishops, by virtue of our apostolic authority, we appoint you auxiliary bishop of the Archdiocese of Chicago as well as titular bishop of Tuburbo Maggiore, granting to you the rights and, and imposing the obligations which canon law delineates. Indeed, you may receive an episcopal ordination from any Catholic bishop outside the city of Rome, the liturgical prescripts being of, observed. However, prior to this, you must make the profession of faith and take the oath of fidelity toward us and our successors in accordance with the norms of ecclesiastical law. Moreover, be sure to remain in the bond of fraternal communion with the aforementioned shepherd, constantly assisting him so that the flock entrusted to his pastoral care may be taught with steadfast truth and in its spiritual good, faithfully nurtured. To this end, beloved son, may you support yourself by the example and intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary in faith, hope, and charity, who made the mother and disciple of the world, does not fail to strengthen the church ministers. Given at Rome, at St. Peter's, on the third day of the month of July, in the year of the Lord 2018, the sixth of our pontificate. And again, it is signed, Francis.
parents and families of Bishops Bartosik, Casey, and Hicks. Your son, your brother, and your uncle will need you now more than ever. So stay close to him and pray every day for him. I'm also honored that Pope Francis is with us here today in the person of his personal representative. Welcome, Archbishop Christophe Pierre. We put you to a real, a great deal of work today, three letters. I ask that you let the Holy Father know of our deep affection and enthusiastic support here in Chicago for his ministry. Your participation today is also a reminder to us all, especially the bishops present here, how we are united with each other and with the one chosen by the Lord to be the successor king. I want to warmly greet all of you joining in this moment in the life of the church. You know firsthand how God so richly has blessed these men before us today. You've worked with them. They've been your pastors. They've been with your families. Their youthfulness is a reminder that Christ is always doing something new and ever calling us to change and to follow him more closely. The word of God invites us to join in Solomon's prayer for wisdom as he assumes leadership of God's people. Solomon has every earthly possession, power, and position. Yet there is one thing he cannot attain on his own, wisdom. He must beg for it. Wisdom is so different and otherworldly that it makes all the gold in the world seem to be a little sand and silver like the mud on our shoes. We, the leaders of the church, whose failures are on full display in these days, are like Solomon. We come here today as beggars in need of wisdom. We beg for wisdom as we celebrate holy orders, the sacrament which reveals in word and symbol how church life should be properly ordered. For the threefold ministry of proclaiming the word, leading the flock, and mediating the presence of God's holiness in our midst to be genuine in life giving. Proclaiming the word, Jesus tells us, is more than speaking in his name. Rather, as Pope Francis teaches us, preaching and proclaiming God's word is fundamentally about inviting people into the dialogue God has already begun with them. It is not simply about repeating the words of Jesus, reciting doctrinal formulas from the Catechism, or invoking canon law in a way that places heavy burdens on others. Rather, a pastor's aim should be to draw people into a dialogue with God, modeling the art of listening and discerning. We have been called to form consciences, not replace them. Pope Francis has urged. This means looking on people the way that Jesus did, with deep respect for all as fellow pilgrims. It means making space so people have the necessary freedom to respond to God. And it means a pastoral approach open to learning from the experiences of our brothers and sisters as they encounter Christ. That attentiveness must be given especially to the poor, Pope Francis tells us. For they oftentimes are sensitive to values and aspects of Christian morality that the powerful and educated overlook. And in this moment, a great change for the church. The poorest among us are the victim survivors of clerical sexual abuse. The bravery and courage they have shown have challenged the complacency that for too many decades ignored the pain of a child and has shamefully more been, been more preoccupied with institutional self-protection and image. We have done much to cleanse the church of that disordered, conscious, shocking way of doing things, 
but we must do more. To hear the cries of all those who have been injured and take up anew the path of healing and justice. Tend the flock of God in your midst, not by constraint, but eagerly, not lording it over it, but being an example to the flock. These are the words of Peter, a fisherman who had to learn how to be a shepherd. Peter is a testimony to the steep learning curve facing every bishop throughout life. A good shepherd must always be ready to adjust, Pope Francis tells us. At times, he must be in front of the flock to lead, to point out and protect from danger. Other times, he must be in the middle of the flock so that they get to know him and so that he gets to know them, calling them each by name. Finally, there are moments, the Holy Father notes, in which the shepherd has to be behind the sheep, not only to make sure none strays, but also because the sheep are able to sniff out fresh waters that are unknown to the shepherd. Bravery and courage, compassion and affection, humility and openness to being led, these are the qualities of a good shepherd. Finally, there is a proper order in the life of the church for mediating God's grace and presence in our midst. We are blessed in these days with the homily of St. Augustine in the Office of Readings. He tells us that the primary relationship a bishop has with those he serves is based on the baptism he shares with them. I am a Christian with you and must give a rigorous account of my life, he writes. The late Cardinal Frano Shepherd made the same point during the Second Vatican Council telling bishops that ordination does not annihilate their baptism. As chrism is poured on their heads today, these new bishops are reminded of the first anointing they received in the sacrament of initiation, but also of the second anointing on their hands in the day of their ordination as priests. Both anointings serve as a perpetual reminder that a bishop is a man in relationship with his people and with his priest. He is ordained not to be a man of influence, a power broker, a celebrity, who cultivates reputation and fame because of his talents. Such an approach would only separate him from his people and his priest. He needs none of this, for he knows that by virtue of his baptism, he already belongs to a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people called out of darkness into God's wonderful light. There is wisdom to be found in word and sacrament, a wisdom we need to beg for, because we cannot attain it on our own. That wisdom is needed now more than ever as we work to set things right, to order the church's life in a way that shuns sin, roots out corruption, that shatters the illusion that some are privileged and protected, deserving of special treatment and exempt from accountability. Today, I ask all here to pray that we, your leaders, be granted this gift, particularly as we now face our failures, many of them of our own making, and as we seek forgiveness for those who have been harmed. As a way of expressing that need, I'm going to ask for a variation on how we usually invoke the help of the Holy Ones and the Litany of Saints. I'm going to ask you, the faithful in this congregation, along with the priests, deacons, and our seminarians, to remain standing during the litany of the saints, and all the bishops will kneel as those to be ordained will prostrate, prostrate. As the three to be ordained do so, I will join them. We, like Solomon, come before the Lord as beggars in need of wisdom, a gift only God can give. 
But we also pray that the Lord will grant the church a renewed and constant thirst for justice and healing. Confident and filled with hope that these two are gifts God has always wanted to give to his children. ancient rule of the Holy Fathers ordains that a bishop-elect is to be questioned in the presence of the people and on his resolve to uphold the faith and to discharge his duty. And so, my dear brothers, I ask you, do you resolve by the grace of the Holy Spirit to discharge until death the office entrusted to us by the apostles, which we are about to pass on to you by the laying on of hands? You resolve to preach the gospel of Christ with constancy and fidelity. You resolve to guard the deposit of faith, entire and incorrupt, as handed down by the apostles, preserved in the church everywhere and at all times. Do you resolve to build up the body of Christ, this church, and to remain in unity of that body together with the order of bishops under the authority of the successor of St. Peter the Apostle? You resolve to render obedience faithfully to the successor of the blessed Apostle Peter. You resolve to guide the holy people of God in the way of salvation as devoted fathers and sustain them with the help of your fellow ministers, the priests and the deacons? You resolve for the sake of the Lord's name to be welcoming and merciful to the poor, to strangers, and to all who are in need. Do you resolve as good shepherds to seek out the sheep who stray and gather them into the Lord's flock? Do you resolve to pray without ceasing to Almighty God for the holy people and to carry out the office of high priest without reproach. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Dearly beloved, we now pray that the kindness of Almighty God in providing for the welfare of the church will grant an abundance of his grace for these chosen ones. Please remain standing. Please stand.
graciously hear our petitions, O Lord. Pour out upon these your servants the power of your blessing, flowing from the horn of priestly grace, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
establish rulers and priests, and did not leave your sanctuary without ministers, and who, from the foundation of the world, were pleased to be glorified in those that you have chosen. Pour out now upon these chosen ones that power which is from you, the governing spirit, whom you gave to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, the spirit whom he bestowed upon the holy apostles, who established the church in each place as your sanctuary for the glory and unceasing praise of your name. Grant, O oh Father, knower of all hearts, that these your servants who you have chosen for the office of bishop may shepherd your holy flock, serving you night and day. May they fulfill before you without reproach the ministry of the high priesthood, so that always gaining your favor, they may offer up the gifts of your holy church. Grant that by the power of the spirit of the high priesthood, they may have the power to forgive sins according to your command, assign offices according to your decrees, and loose every bond according to the power given by you to the apostles. May they please you by their meekness and purity of heart, presenting a fragrant offering through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom glory and power and honor are yours with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Church, now and forever and ever. Amen. May God, who has made you a share in the high priest of Christ, himself pour out upon you the oil of mystical anointing and make you fruitful with an abundance of spiritual blessings. May God, who has made you a share in the high priest of Christ, himself pour out upon you the oil of mystical anointing and make you fruitful with an abundance of spiritual blessings.
receive this ring, the seal of fidelity, adorned with undefiled faith. Preserve unblemished the bride of God in the Holy Church. Receive the mitre. So that when the chief shepherd appears, you may deserve to receive from him an unfading crown of glory. Receive the crozier, the sign of your pastoral office. Keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as a bishop to govern the church of God. Receive this ring, the seal of fidelity, adorned with undefiled faith, preserve a blemish of the bride of God, the Holy Church. Receive the mitre. And may the splendor of holiness shine forth in you, so that when the chief shepherd appears, you may deserve to receive from him an unfading crown of glory. Receive the crozier, the sign of your pastoral office, and keep watch over the whole flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as a bishop to govern the church. Receive the gospel and preach the word of God with all patience and sound teaching. Receive this ring, the seal of fidelity, adorned with undefiled faith, preserve a blemish, the bride of God. Receive the mitre. And may the splendor of holiness shine forth in you, so that when the chief shepherd appears, you may deserve to receive from him an unfading crown of glory. Receive the crozier the sign of your pastoral office, and keep watch over the flock in which the Holy Spirit has placed you as a bishop to govern the church.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, which we have presented for your church and for these your servants, newly ordained as bishops, become an offering acceptable to you and for the good of the flock. May those you have raised up among your people to be high priest be endowed by your gift with apostolic virtues through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant and by your wondrous design we're pleased to decree that this one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priest of the people that he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters. They strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and the saints, we too give you thanks as an exultation we acclaim. <laughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. 
and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of Christ and your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our bishop, and me, your unworthy servant, and these servants of yours, Robert and Mark, who have been ordained today as shepherds for the church with the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
By the power of this sacrament, O Lord, increase the gifts of your grace in these your servants and bishops, that they may serve you worthily in the pastoral ministry and receive the eternal rewards of faithful stewards through Christ our Lord. I love being a Chicago priest. For the last many years, they have been my fathers, my brothers, and finally, my sons. 
Today, here there is a priest who is not from Chicago, but from the great diocese of Green Bay, the priest who baptized me 57 years ago, Father John Hefner. Welcome to him. We just came back from Rome, and when you go to Rome, you visit St. Peter's Basilica, and when you visit St. Peter's Basilica, you kiss the foot of the statue of St. Peter. And when I did that for the first time, going to Rome uh, as a new priest, a friend of mine, a priest friend, wrote a poem for me. And I only remember two lines from it. Unfortunately, I lost it. And the two lines I remember are, as I kiss the death of me. And the other line I remember is, I am going all the way. There's an echo of yesterday's gospel in that for all of us, all of us baptized. Not just us priests, not just us bishops. Whoever loses his life for my sake and that of the gospel will save it. Thank you to my fathers, my brothers, and my sons. I love being a Chicago priest. And I'm grateful for the call to become a bishop my dad, may he rest in peace, said to us many, many times, I have been in over my head my whole life. <laughs> Am I lying? It was his way of challenging us to put our faith forward in our life. On Saturday last in Rome, uh, a woman, a laywoman, from the Netherlands, speaking to us from one of the pontifical commissions on Evangelii Gaudium, the joy of the gospel, said to us what, for me, was the takeaway from the whole week. She said, we don't need just priests. We need a presbyterate. Priests are not enough. And that rang true. We don't need just priests. We need a presbyterate. Priests are not enough. Cardinal Supic, I thank you. Uh, and I promise that as a bishop, I'll follow you into the deep. Finally, something dear to me over the last many years has been the end of a letter that St. Vincent de Paul wrote to his colleague, St. Louise de Marillac. After 36 years of shared ministry to the benefit of the poor, uh, he wrote to the Archbishop of Paris to tell him what the two of them had been doing together for all those 36 years. So he wrote to the Archbishop and then he wrote to de Louise, to St. Louise to tell her what he had put in the letter to the Archbishop of Paris. And so at the end he says, I suppress a quantity of things that I might have said about you. Let us leave them for our Lord to say to everyone and let us keep ourselves hidden. I hope you can hear in those few words what I do, profound respect sincere gratitude, tender affection. I could go on for another 36 years if somebody said something like that to me. Todos los feligreses de las parroquias donde yo he servido, los equipos pastorales, los diáconos y sus esposas, all of the volunteers, all of the benefactors, I'm saying it to you. wonderful to spend an afternoon here with you, giving thanks to God in our prayer. God who is almighty, all wonderful, before whom we're humbled, 
As I join you in giving thanks to God, in a particular way today, I want to give thanks to Pope Francis. I want to give thanks to Cardinal Supich. I'm grateful for their invitation to me to deepen my commitment of service to this church that began as a kid at St. Terence serving Mass and continued through my years at seminary, took on speed when I became ordained. I'm grateful to them for inviting me to deepen this commitment of service. It was a number of years ago that my family and I found ourselves in Germany at the mother house of the sisters, the Franciscan sisters of Waldbreitbach. My sister Pat was professing vows. And there was a sister in the mother house there named Frida Bertha, who invited our family to go with her one day to see her sheep. And so she took us up into the hills behind the mother house. And as we made our way up these paths, Frida Bertha began to call the sheep by name. And as they heard their names, they came. They came close to her because they knew they could trust her. Because they knew that with Frida Berta, they would experience deep love. And they understood that they would be fed together. And so this becomes my prayer today. As I surrender myself to this new role as Auxiliary Bishop, I pray that as we come to know each other, you come to trust me as a shepherd in this church. That as we walk together, that we can share and celebrate this abiding love of God that sustains us day after day. I pray that together we can be fed. Fed by the Eucharist that's at the center of our lives as Catholics, that communion, that oneness that nourishes us on joyful days and sorrowful days. I look to the Good Shepherd of Jesus, who has been my friend and companion for many years now. And I pray that that Good Shepherd, and the example of that Good Shepherd is in Germany, guide me on the path forward. Quiero expresar mi gratitud primeramente a Dios porque Dios es todo. Pero junto con Dios yo quiero agradecer a nuestro Papa Francisco, a nuestro arzobispo el Cardenal Sutich. Y estoy agradecido a ellos porque me invitaron a profundizar mi compromiso, el compromiso de servicio que comenzó en mi niñez como moneguillo en St. Terence, mi compromiso de servicio que continuaba en mi juventud en mi ordenación al sacerdocio. Yo quiero agradecer a ellos por esa invitación. Y también quiero agradecer a ustedes, en particular. Yo quiero agradecer al pueblo hispano aquí en Chicago, porque es por ustedes que me han acompañado en este ministerio. Es por ustedes que yo estoy aquí hoy día. Y junto con Dios, espero que Sería posible continuar alabando y dando gracias a Dios por los días adelante. Gracias, que Dios nos bendiga. Dos compañeros de, de clase, los dos nuevos obispos, yo también puedo expresarme en español. Y como ellos, yo tuve que aprender el idioma. Y para aprender, yo fui a México por un año en 1989 para ser un voluntario 
en una fundación católica se llama Nuestros Pequeños Hermanos. Después de un año allá, regresé a Chicago no solamente hablando español, sino también con un verdadero amor por la cultura latina y la gente hispana. I'm now going to repeat that in seven different languages. <laughs> Actually, I wish I could, especially, especially in Polish and all the languages that we serve here in the Archdiocese of Chicago in our parishes. But for right now, I'm limited to English and Spanish. But for any of you who know me, you know my life dramatically changed for the better. In 1989, when I graduated from Niles College, I went as a volunteer to Mexico to Nuestros Pequeños Hermanos, our little brothers and sisters. It's a home, a family that cares for orphaned and, ab and abandoned children. The day I arrived, I was greeted by the director, Father Phil Cleary. He took me on a tour. He showed me around, and it ended by him introducing me to the 65 third and fourth grade boys that I'd be caring for throughout the year. They applauded me. They came up to me. They started asking me questions in a language I still didn't speak. And as I was getting more and more anxious, one of the boys, as he was standing in back, was eating an orange. He took it, and he threw it. And it landed directly on my head. With, with orange juice dripping from my forehead, I stood there thinking to myself, what did I just get myself into? <laughs> I got myself into one of the best experiences of my life. It was life-changing. Probably about 45 minutes ago or an hour, I had chrism oil poured on my head. And throughout the course of this mass, this chrism oil has continued to kind of drip down the back. <laughs> but I could ask myself that same question that I asked 29 years ago. What did I just get myself into? <laughs> I just said yes to becoming a bishop. In a time that doesn't seem that easy, we have our challenges. What did I get myself into? Before I answer that question, or try to, I'd just like to share a few thank yous to Cardinal Supich and to Archbishop Christophe Pierre. Thank you. Thank you for the trust that you've placed in me and in my brothers. And I would like to, that you please extend our gratitude to the Holy Father. To the bishops, my brother priests, and all of you who work for and are part of this church, thank you. Thank you not only for your presence and for your support, but thank you for the ways that you constantly express your faith, your hope, and your love in God and neighbor. To my friends, compadres, family, to all of you, thank you. Please know that you are the greatest treasure in my life. <laughs> Forgive me if I don't look that way, because otherwise I won't be able to continue. To my mom and dad, <laughs> thank you. You are both the best, and you have truly taught me what unconditional love looks like. So with this holy oil dripping and drying from my head, what did I just get myself into? I'm not sure. 
I know that I have a lot to learn. But this is one thing I do know. That that same God who has loved me and been with me from the very day of my birth is going to continue to love me and not only me, but continue to love the church and lead us and guide us forever. Please know this, we're going to give it our best, we're going to give it our all, try to surrender our lives completely to God and always try to do God's will and not our own. For here's the thing, if we try to take these next steps on our own, that's impossible. But we're not on our own, we're with you, we're with the church, and we're with God. And as we know, with God, all things are possible. God bless everyone. Thank you. Thank you for those beautiful words, Bishop Hicks, Bishop Casey, and Bishop Bartosek. Good afternoon, I'm Father Greg Sackowitz, Rector of Holy Name Cathedral. I would like to make a few announcements before the sun goes down. <laughs> Light refreshments will be served in the cathedral courtyard, which is just on the north side of the cathedral to my right. Now, in order to get to the courtyard, please exit the main front doors of the cathedral and turn to your right. The entrance gate to the courtyard is right there on State Street. You will need your ticket to enter the reception, so please have your ticket ready that you used earlier to get into Holy Name Cathedral. Please do not exit the cathedral after the celebration from the side door on the north to my right. It is for the priests and deacons to exit and to go back to Paris Center to change out of their vestments. Now, after our celebration, Bishop Bartosik, Bishop Casey, and Bishop Hicks will remain here in the cathedral to greet each and every one of you. They'll be here in front of the sanctuary, each of them at the head of these three aisles, the north, center, and south both sides and aisles into the center. So Bishop Partosik will be the head of this north aisle directly here in front of me. Bishop Casey will be at the head of the center aisle right in the very middle. And Bishop Hicks will be at the head of the south side to my far left. Now you may line up in each aisle. Please follow the directions of the ushers. Our new bishops will greet until 6.15 p.m., not 6.15 a.m. <laughs> now there will be a little bit of time between the end of our celebration and when the bishops come back as they need to change out of their vestments. So please feel free to go out to the reception area first and then come back to get a blessing and greeting from the three new bishops. Now in order to expedite the entire process, please refrain from taking photos in the receiving line. Thank you. Please follow these directions and no one gets hurt. <laughs> God bless all of you. And though Cardinal Sufich once served in Spokane, Washington, may the Chicago Bears beat the Seattle Seahawks tonight.
choir, who just uh, did a wonderful job.